Forsaken Down the Dream. Um, semi straightforward. Forsaken Down the Dream. It's more of a poetic way of don't let go of the dream. But, I mean, that doesn't sound that cool. Wow, that guy almost sort of did for me. Forsaken Down the Dream. Yeah, yeah. That's a more poetic way to say it. Um, I remember writing those those verses, been down this road too many times. You've taught me how it feels to die. Um, I was writing that about someone in my life that was a reminder of someone in my life from previously of just the same old stuff, basically, the same old crap, the same old person being difficult in your life that makes things impossible and you just wanting to, I use this phrase a lot, cleave yourself from them to get yourself out of them. Um, the crestfallen, on the crestfallen, I like that part. I like to find words that kind of, there's more of that word play. So, crest fall in, I'm asking for the crest of the waves to fall in on the crest fallen, the forsaken, those who feel like they've been forsaken. So, like, asking the waves to just drop over the heads of those who feel uh, deserted, which myself is one of the, the, those who felt forsaken on their quest to forsake not the dream, if that makes sense. Open your eyes I want you to see what you've done to me Crying out those eyes Run away from all the pain All the pain of love Ah, uh, Departure Departure's a pretty intense song, obviously Departure is a song that is about thoughts of suicide um, It's something that not every person goes through, but a lot of people go through, and I feel like it's probably a lot more than we recognize. It's a lot, yeah. So it's 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 a thing that a lot of us go through. Um, you know, obviously, I wrote the song. These were thoughts that I had in my head. But what I always tell people is, don't be. Yeah, these these thoughts are terrible. They exist. They exist. They're real. It's important to acknowledge them. It's important if you're feeling these things, call the suicide prevention hotline. Um, Try to hit up a therapist. Talking to your friends is good. It can be difficult because sometimes friends don't know what to say. Sometimes family, they're going to get emotional. And they're going to get a little bit scared. It's going to be hard for them. Um, but do know that you're not alone. And do know that there are much better options than to go through with these thoughts. So for me, when I was going through these thoughts, I would put pen to paper, put it on music, make it into a song. And it, and it made me see how ridiculous it was. Because, like, you know, I was feeling these things. I was feeling everything that's in that song. Um, so I put it on there. Once I put it on into a song, once I got rid of it, once I spewed it out of myself, it was out of my system. And still, you'll have dark days, you'll have bad days, even no matter how, no matter how great anyone's life might look, the way you look at them, looking that, at them through that, through that mirror, through that window of social media, or like, you know, look at your favorite bands. Everyone has things, you know, I can't believe the Anthony Bourdain thing. Anthony Bourdain is one of the few people in my life that I was never able to meet that was one of my biggest heroes in the world. He was a person that if I would have been able to meet him, I would have been gushing and freaking out because he's the reason why I got into food. He's the reason why I started taking pictures of food and writing about food and um, he inspired me to get into jiu-jitsu and all sorts of stuff. So that was, that was really tough and, you know, I, I, I mean, sometimes it's so ingrained into someone's brains that, that there is, I don't know, maybe it's a chemical imbalance. Um, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what their circumstances are, but all I know that is in my circumstances, what I had to do is, is write about it and address it. And I've, I have, you know, it's, it's, there's nothing wrong with ever seeing a therapist, a shrink, a psychiatrist, that stuff is there to help you. And you look at it like, it's not a weakness. It's not a crutch. It doesn't mean there's something wrong with you. It means the best metaphor I've thought of seeing someone and talking to someone is like getting a massage for your brain. It's like getting chiropractic for your brain. It's taking care of your mind, which is something that you have to do. Um, too many people are too obsessed with taking care of their bodies um, and not taking care of their minds at all. So that's just something that I encourage everyone to do. If you can find someone that's on your healthcare plan and just, just go try it out once. If you're having a bad day, having a bad month, having a bad year, book an appointment, talk to someone and it's not something you're going to feel great right after. It's, it's the kind of thing you have to you have to be in treatment for. You're going to see them for a couple times a month, get through the humps, and then and then keep going back at it. But basically, what this song's message is: you know, the song is dark, the lyrics are dark, but the point is, I'm a happy person hanging out with all of you. I'm playing games. I've got kids. I'm playing music around the world. It shows that when I had those feelings, I put it into a song, made a very dark, intense song, but it showed people that. They're not the only ones that go through that. So it's it's hard. It's a hard subject, but it's one that, that definitely needs to be spoken about. Um, I mean, I'm not 
I'm not a licensed mental health counselor, so I'm, I'm not the person necessarily to talk to, but I'm at least the person to open up that, that gateway where you can go, all right, here are the lyrics. This guy went through the same thing as me. Why is he still kicking? You know, what did he do? He put this into songs. He does all these extracurricular things. He keeps working the music. He's got friends and family and, and a stream and all this stuff. So it shows you that, and my, my, the set of stuff that I use is going to be for you, but the set of stuff that you find for yourself is going to be good for you. So you have to find what things they are that help you feel bound. Katie Singleman. I coincidentally was watching, I think it was the I History Channel. Illegal U -turn. An illegal U turn? A legal U turn. I was coincidentally watching the History Channel one day, and it was about samurai. So I was intrigued. So I've always loved everything that's about Japanese culture, Japanese history. And uh, they were talking about there was an old law in feudal Japanese times where a samurai, by law, was allowed to cut off your head One if you offended him, if, if you pissed him off. It's called Kiri Ste Gomen. Kiri Ste Gomen, I think, means... Stay Gomen means sorry. Kiri Ste, I think, means to cut. So it's to cut turn. sorry. But what it means is, like, sorry, but I have to take your head is the, the, like, the more so the translation that it means. And I was hooked when I heard Kiri Ste Gomen. I was like, I need to put that in a song. That's that's so metal. That's amazing. So I took Kiri Ste Gomen, um knew that it'd be the name of the song, started writing the song. And with this one, like I mentioned, with Shogun, Throws a Perdition, it's about the fucking Marsh Keys to go, man. These songs are meant to be read as if they're stories. It's like its own independent little story that doesn't exist. And you're just supposed to picture all the stuff in your head and go for it and have fun with the story. But Keys to go, man, is that, that was the catalyst. Like, sometimes you could, you could see something in school, you could see something learning, you could see something in mythology or history. Um, you're just into it. And, uh, yeah, yeah, it's awesome. It's awesome. So you can find whatever might inspire you, put it into a song and go from there. Part of the strings your that song is about an evil dictator, an evil dictatorship. Um, about one who is villainously leading a people. It can be applied to any uh, previous historic dictator, contemporary dictator, contemporary leader. Um, it's about corruption. It's about the idea of someone who feels that they can um, run a people in the way that they seem fit for their personal gain and their personal benefit. That's what Pull Harder is about. Um, there are parts where uh, the idea I shift the point of view of the lyrics to that dictator and I speak it as if I am that person. Um, the Pull Harder on the Strings of Your Martyr line is basically about no matter how hard one of faith or one not of faith cries or prays or pleads to what they believe is the power above all, no matter how much they plead with that, it's not going to change anything. So it's pretty dismal, pretty bleak, but that's what the point of that is. That's what pull harder in the Scripture of Honor means, is that no matter how hard you plead for this thing to change, it's just going to inevitably be there. It's this immovable, bad force that is there. That's what that means. I don't think anyone's ever really asked, but that's what that means. I found this right for the maid to bleed and stop No will it take away the pain I've been up there searching something day And I struggle to find my way Okay, so Strife. Strife is semi-similar to Suffocating Sight, and I, I referenced Strife, I was talking about Suffocating Sight earlier. Uh, Strife and Suffocating Sight are songs about general anxiety, songs about kind of struggling with self things. Um, Strife... In the chorus, I found the strife won't make the bleeding stop. So saying like fighting, I found that struggle, I found that conflict, I found that fighting back at this anxiety won't make the bleeding stop. The metaphorical bleeding of the self, um, nor will it take away the pain. <laughs> um, what I've noticed with myself, so I wrote a, 
my first set. I mean, maybe Ember has a song about. It. I can't figure out which song on Ember is about anxiety and stuff. But suffocating sight absolutely is. It's about that kind of general struggle that we all feel, and then that tightening of the breath, anxiety that we we have to deal with. Um, but it was interesting for me because when I was being analytical of my myself and my lyrical growth, the fact that on record two and on record six. I have songs about anxiety. It shows that it's not something that necessarily can be cured. I know that may sound kind of discouraging, but it's something that more so needs to be acknowledged. Like I don't, I wasn't given this this technique from my therapist, but I've told her that I look at my anxiety as like a person. So like I can be like, all right, this anxiety is real. The anxiety is making me react this way to this situation. Like I, I do have pretty severe moments where I we all do, like don't know how to deal with something. And it helps for me to go, okay, it's the anxiety doing this. And I imagine it's this, this faceless, nameless being that is my anxiety. And like we discussed with departure, doing positive things like jujitsu, writing songs, uh, hanging out with friends, talking to people, being constructive, being, uh, being positive in the fact that even if you're getting out negative things out of yourself, you're putting that into something positive, like something cool, something music, something that other people can relate to. That's what the song strike is about. It's it's about realizing that no matter how much I try to fight this thing, it's just going to be there. It's a part of me, and I need to learn how to not necessarily not accept it and let it be, but more so work around it and find the tools that I need to have to exist and coexist with it, and kind of keep that thing on the back burner, even though it's something that I, I can't put away. Deceived. Um, I wrote the lyrics to Deceived again in English class. It feels like I got a lot of my best ideas in English class in high school. Um, it was either 1989 or it was Brave New World that we had just finished. And I was really into the idea of making a song depicting how a utopian society is not possible. That was the idea of a utopian society is not sustainable and how it's basically only set for failure. Um, and that's what the lyrics to The Deceiver are about. It's, it's about people who have been blinded into and tricked into or forced into or born into the idea of a utopian society one in which it's just not something that can work. It's not something that's feasible. The concept of it is great and all, but it doesn't really work. And that's, that's what that song is about. I got done. Gunshot to head trepidation. Uh, gunshot to head trepidation is, I mean, the whole of ascendancy is very, very intense lyrically. Um, this song is about domestic violence, child abuse. Thankfully, it's not something that I ever personally had to deal with. I was I was blessed with a very fantastic upbringing in a great household to grow up in. Um, but I had a lot of friends. I, I remember I had a girlfriend who had a history of domestic violence and a history of child abuse. So it's something that, I mean, it it's one of the most difficult things for me to comprehend in life that it that even exists. Especially now being a parent, especially after meeting all these great people in my life who have had to go through some pretty serious stuff. I felt like even when I was, I was 17, 18 when I wrote the song, even at that age, I knew I had to make a song like that for people. I knew I had to make something that people could relate to, to know that they weren't the only one that were going through it. And in this song, there isn't necessarily a light at the end of the tunnel, and nor are there often with a lot of these very intense, dark, Turn lyrical left. themes that I've tackled. But what the light at the end of the tunnel that I always say is, is that the song exists, is that life was able to continue, and that by making something like this, I was able to help other people find solace. I was able to help other people recognize that they're not the only ones. Um, I can't even count the amount of fans that I've met around the planet who have said, thank you for Gunshot. I grew up with that. I kept very quiet about it. I was ashamed of it. I thought it was my fault. Varying degrees of things like that. Like, I thought it was my fault. I thought this. I thought that. But that song saved me. Um, I remember meeting someone that their whole life 
was dealing with that, and they, you know, I guess it wasn't necessarily Stockholm Syndrome, but it was something like it, you know, they, they feel trapped, and they don't know how to get out, and they saw that, they saw that set of lyrics, and they were like, you know what, I can get out of this, I can get out of this lifestyle, and I, I only ever hope that my band can be that for people in, in any situation they might be going through, in any, any circumstance, um, so that's, that's what Gunshot's about, it's very intense, um, it's, it's, you know, it sucked writing lyrics like that, but I felt like I had to, I felt like it was my responsibility, you know, I always talk about songs that need to have meaning, and songs that can't just be pointless drivel saying that life is a party, or just like, yeah, let's, let's, we can do it, you know, without any substance, you know, I, I do see, like, motivational songs in rock and metal, um, but there's no real, like, point behind it, so I feel like with, with Trivium, it's always been about very significant lyrical substance.